<laughs> it's me again. This is video number five from, it's supposed to be five videos, but I decided to make a sixth one. And in the sixth video um, from the Giga Berlin factory tour, I'm going to make a summary. A summary about the differences that I already mentioned partly in the last videos and also I add a few other things. But before we go there, we start now with the number fifth, with the last process step in a normal vehicle production, which is assembly, assembling. So what is assembly? It's actually pretty close to joining, while if you do joining, you have kind of two parts that you bring together with some technology. If you do assembly, you don't put parts together, you put systems together. So it's not a big difference, you think. Um, it shouldn't be, it's a little bit more complex. Um, assembly is called general assembly or final assembly. There are different ways of assembly and we, we are not going into details here really, but the purpose is to give you an over overview about the process that actually we haven't seen. So <laughs> we went through the factory, everybody was excited and looked around and here and there, but we haven't seen any assembly. To be honest, we haven't seen any real stamping and we haven't seen any real casting. And that's totally fine and totally okay because there was no final permit yet for the Giga Berlin factory, which I hope will change early in November. But what I can say is that we haven't even seen the places at least not in detail, where general assembly is happening. We went, you know, we passed by and there's been some signs about here is assembly and you see it on the pictures that I'm showing, but there was no cars in there. So you start with assembly really with the painted body. So we have the castings in there. We have, you know, the stem parts um, jointed together with the castings and um, the entire thing is now painted too so it's ready for the last steps and one of the last step is obviously that you put between the front and the rear casting the structural battery pack in so and here it comes a big big difference i mean first of all in terms of vertical integration uh, tesla is supposed to be the only automaker worldwide who is producing its own seats which is amazing i mean seats are not that easy to make. There are four seats manufacturers or suppliers in the world who are supplying all vehicle manufacturers. And I wrote an article where I said, you know, a seat is the interface to your customer. Actually, it's one of the biggest interfaces because your butt and your back and your legs are close to the seat. So you want this to be a pleasant experience. And you know, we all have experienced good seats and bad seats. And, you know, usually I hear very positive things about the seats and actually I love the seats from Tesla. There are some people claiming it's too soft, but overall the, you know, the experience here or the, what people say is very, very positive. So manufacturing seats is a lot of manual work. And you see in these pictures here, the production line of the seats. So it requires a lot of power and force to do it. It's really hard manual work. And because the material is flexible, you can't really do it with robots. Um, not sure if Tesla tried it. Um, if they did that, it didn't work out. I've seen later videos about, I think from Fremont, where we've seen where, you know, strong people pulling this material over the seat and making sure everything is fine and neat and works out. So it's, it's unique that Tesla is doing that, but it gives them a competitive advantage because Tesla never did this deep vertical integration because they like to be vertical integrated or they think this is a fantastic, you know, competitive edge. It happened by accident. Tesla is doing that because you know, they, they needed a certain specification, a certain, you know, a certain experience or even a certain, you know, um, you know, uh, how to call it, a certain way how a system works 
and they couldn't get this from suppliers or suppliers been saying you know we can do that but it's going to be very expensive or we can do it but it you know we can't promise when uh, or they said you know we have to develop and design this process on our own to start with and what they presented to tesla was not sufficient was not satisfactory for tesla so they decided well before we go that risky path path and we are not even sure that this supplier really understands what we are looking for we do it on our own and this is what happened with seeds obviously and they repeat it now also at giga berlin so there is a reason why they do that and i believe it's a good idea so tesla is the only one producing its own seeds but even more important you learned that we have a front car casting a front you know, casting and uh, the rear casting. And in between is a structural battery pack, which you see here in this picture. So that structural battery pack in G Giga Berlin is filled with two different versions of cells. So they have, for, you know, risk reasons, implemented two process lines. One is for the 2170 cells, which are the normal cells that we know from the past. Really good cells, works nicely. It's an established working process. And the other one is this new famous 4680 cells, which are tabless, and you probably have seen a lot of videos about them. I'm not going to dive here deep into that. I'm, I made a couple of pictures um, that you see here. The structural battery pack with this new um, batteries, which obviously, given the bigger size, are not that many, which is positive. Um, there's a lot of chatter about the cooling of the batteries and, you know, um, how the thermal management is going to happen, a couple of other things. Um, and the manager, by doing the line, said that cooling is a challenge. So the 4680 is not easy. This is a risky, you know, new step they are doing. But if you don't take risks, you're not getting any reward. So therefore, it makes a lot of sense for Tesla really to go this extra mile to take this risk because that's the reason why they are ahead. So the structural battery pack is more than a normal battery pack because it's structural. What does it mean? It means that in the old days you just put the batteries in a module and that module you know was in a kind of in a, in, a, in, a, in a shell and you put this shell in another shell and that shell went into the shell of the car and all of this happened because uh, Tesla you know they had organizational challenges or issues in that sense that they had you know, a team working on how to mount, how to fix the, um, you know, the battery pack to the vehicle. And then there was another team that was responsible for you know, how to cool and to assemble all the cells and make sure all the electronics works fine without any issues. Um, so, and they also created a shell. So all of a sudden you had two or even three shells of metal around the battery cells and you will say well that's great because of safety nothing can happen but at the end of the day it adds a lot of weight and to be honest the safety part can be solved in different ways and it's not needed that you have you know a variety of different you know shells in a shell Making long story short, um, Tesla did a good thing here by getting rid with the structural battery cell of all this you know obsolete just all this material that's not needed which is just creating weight but more important the pack is behaving as a part of the structure and taking force with all other other automakers in the world the pack is just a pack it's just put in because there are batteries in that should supply the vehicle with energy tesla is different tesla is using the battery pack as a portion of the structure that is taking force rigidity and also making sure that the center of gravity is really low with the vehicle which is all great stuff so that is different to other automakers and this should not be confused now back to assembling there is one big difference here what we've seen and i looked at the pictures very carefully and this is really interesting it looks like from what we've seen and here this presented the Tesla is really mounting, the, you know, fixing the seats directly on the structural battery pack, which is new, which is amazing. Um, all other automakers go with assembling in a different direction. They first do that, what it's called marriage. Marriage is the, you know, combination of the body and the battery pack. So they go together. And this is something everybody is obviously doing. 
but Tesla is first of all putting the seats on the battery pack and then the battery pack, if I'm not mistaken, together with the seats into the car from the bottom, which means that you can use different technologies in terms of fixing everything together. It, it makes a difference if you have the seats outside of the vehicle body installed on the battery pack or if you do it within the car where the pack is already installed after marriage. makes a big difference. And you can use different fasting technologies. So this adds to all the other small changes that, you know, put productivity at front and help making things better, faster and lower cost. So that's amazing. So put this in, the car is almost ready. I mean, we talk now about the wheels and um, doors are all in already. There's just, you know, the computer screen and the front part is, needs to be put in still. But, you know, these are not big, big deals. These are known processes Tesla is running. And at the end of the day, you have the car, the vehicle that is ready to go on the test track um, at Giga Berlin. So this is amazing. This is different. And, and here it comes, which makes it really very important. Um, you know, Ralph Bunstedt, as the CEO of a VW brand, lately said that the Model 3 is built in 10 hours, which is about, you know, three times as fast as an ID3 in Zwickau. So Zwickau is a MEB plant from Volkswagen. And more than three times means that the ID3 need, needs more than 30 hours, while Tesla needs only 10 hours. So this is totally crazy. I mean, if you're in production and you can do something three times as fast, just think about the productivity. It's the same time. And we all know that, you know, VW has higher costs in terms of labor. They have even in Wolfsburg, for instance, about two times the labor count compared to Tesla. Uh, if we look in the future, if the Gigafactory is really working, uh, let's say full ramped up to 500,000 vehicles in 2023, maybe even shon late in 2022, um, they're going to produce 500,000 vehicles with about 20, 21, let's say 25,000 people. But, you know, uh, VW is taking the double amount for the same amount of vehicles, the double you know, amount of people. And it's a unionized company, so they even, you know, pay um, in certain areas um, a little bit more for the overall, you know, package. Or let's say they have less, fle less flexibility, because if you talk about salaries, there's a lot of myth here around with um, the payment in Germany. Uh, I've seen a lot of comparisons, I've posted them on Twitter, and you're going to see that the usual salary for the workers in particular are higher with Tesla than with a unionized company in Germany, which, which, is, which is important to notice. Yes, uh, payment package includes a lot of things like, you know, health and insurances and a lot of other things that comes into play here. But what I've seen really makes it clear that someone working for Tesla at the Giga, Giga Berlin factory has a better salary. The salary is a little bit lower as it looks like on the management and senior management levels, which makes sense asking me compared to Volkswagen. And, um, you know, they get a big you know, option package, like I believe every worker is getting an option package, which is kind of the icing on the cake, because we see right now what's happening to the stock price. And to be honest, and this is not about investment, that's not an advice. But to be honest, it's been a very, very good deal for all people who've been starting with Tesla in Germany before, for instance, like in Prüm, which is the Groman factory. So Groman automation is a very, very valuable and, you know, pretty new part of Tesla. And guess what? The unions tried to get in there and tried really to make a deal with Tesla. And the, you know, employees, the managers, the engineers decided against it. And they got a nice option package that is now, I think, two or three years ago. So that was a good decision because it's going to be worth now a lot. So having said that, um, that's what I wanted to, you know, show today. Um, giving you a little bit an idea about the differences here in terms of sequence, how the assembling process is implemented. And all of that and all what you've seen in the last four videos is resulting in not only a three times faster, you know, production process, 
which would mean f the same time three times the vehicles will roll out of the factory. What you've seen here, what I presented, are improvements based on Shanghai and Fremont. So it's going to be more than one to three as a ratio. It's probably going to be, I don't know, one to four or one to five, which is crazy. I mean, this is totally nuts. And let's face it, it's not only that the costs go down dramatically, it creates for Tesla a lot of flexibility in terms of manage their pricing structures. And they can really, you know, outcompete everybody. So there's this word of cutthroat competition, which really means like if you have two products which are comparable and you know one of the company is reducing the price or able to reduce the price to a level where the other company is bleeding because it's going to be negative, they're making losses and then they go out of business. This is a normal you know, strategy in the industry. Tesla is not going to do that. They don't really look that much at competition. They actually try to keep them alive and they want to make sure that they transition to battery electric vehicles fast enough because it's logic. They can't do everything alone. We need the German automakers and I really hope that they you know, get this managed. Right now, to be honest, and I'm saying this, you know, I'm sounding like a broken record here um, because I repeat every year the same sentence, but I'm more concerned than ever, um, simply because they now realize that they made a mistake in the past in terms of battery electric vehicles and how to approach it, but they're still not making, you know, putting the right measures into place. I don't see them acting as they need to in order to solve the issues they have. Well, that's the way it is. And this was number five of my videos. I close the production part here and uh, in a sixth video, you gonna see or gonna hear 10 points that I mentioned and 10 points that differentiate Giga Berlin compared with all other factories in the automotive industry, at least in Germany, in Europe, maybe even worldwide. I hope you enjoyed it and stay tuned. Thank you.